I'm Colin. We are the Santa Fe Pro Musica Bach Ensemble for this year's Bach Festival. It's so nice to see you. And uh, this guy Bach, we're going to be playing music of his. And he lived a long time ago, uh, 1685 to 1750, so um, around 300 years ago. And uh, so what, what do we love about his music? So many things, and that's what we're going to be exploring today. But first, uh, I wanted to ask, how many of you play an instrument? Raise your hand. Okay, how many of you sing? Raise a hand. That should be probably everyone. Everyone sings, right? But, um, and how many of you play any of the instruments on stage here? Okay, we got some string players. So this is the string family, and uh, we have here uh, the, whole, the whole string family, plus this guy in the middle who's I'm not sure if he's part of the string family. Maybe, maybe not. But um, first of all, what, what is this instrument? Just shout it out if you know. Violin. Violin. Okay, and what about over here? Cello. And what about the big one? Bass. Bass. And what about over here? Viola. Viola, all right. That's it. So, and like families, we have big to small or small to big. And what happens when you have a smaller instrument? Does it sound higher or lower? Higher, higher right? But Stephen, can we hear your highest note? That's pretty. Oh, yeah. Well, so we go into the mouse range. And then what's your lowest note? Okay, and then in the violas, you have that note, right? That same. And where, where do you, how low do you go? All right, and then the cellos have that note. And how low do you go? And then, Deborah, how low do we go with the bass? And what about, okay, so what is this thing that we play with, the string with? We pull the string. Yeah, a bow, right? So, and it's made out of wood from Brazil, Pernambuco, and this white stuff is hair from a horse. They give the horse a haircut, it doesn't hurt the horse, the horse is fine. And, uh, but then in the middle here, this is David, this is our friend David, and he plays the harpsichord. Um, can we just hear your, maybe your low kind of notes? Right, and then you go up to, what's your? So you kind of have a lot of the range. And would you consider yourself a string instrument? It's a combination of string and percussion, actually. Right, because he's actually pressing keys like a piano, but inside here, it's almost like he's doing something called pizzicato. Can someone play pizzicato? Right, so there are little, little hooks in here that pull the string. So it's kind of like a mechanical guitar or mandolin in a way. All right, so, music of Bach. Let's, Bach, I think of as an inventor, um, and all the pieces we're playing today are called Concerto Grosso. Now, that doesn't mean gross, like disgusting. It means, it's Italian word for large, grosso. Can we all say Concerto Grosso? Concerto Grosso. Great. And uh, this first piece that we were playing is part of his, something called the Brandenburg Concerti that he wrote. And this is uh, one that's for the string family and harpsichord. So, what we have here is, uh, in a big concerto, everyone is their own solo voice here. Everyone is playing their own part. And sometimes we become a section together as a unit, the violins, the violas, cellos, bass, but all other times we're doing our own thing. So let's, and I think of Bach as this inventor who must have liked things like mechanical clocks and all the interlocking gears. So we're gonna pull apart a little bit of this piece for you and see the inner workings that Bach was working with. Let's hear it with the violins the beginning of the piece until the middle of measure four. Great, so that's the main motif, which is another fancy word for melody or special thing. Then let's go to the violas from the beginning until the end of measure two. Great, so you can almost think of that as Bach thinking of violas as a trumpet there. And then in the celli and the bass, we have uh, the role of something called the basso continuo along with the harpsichord with David. And um, 
Also continuo, you can think of as the people that keep us moving along in the piece, or like in a jazz ensemble, the bass part. So uh, can we say, basso continuo? Basso continuo. Great. And let's hear the continuo, the basso continuo section, beginning till the middle of measure eight. now and listen for how all the parts are interlocking. jigsaw puzzles, right? So all those little pieces make the whole. So we're going to jump to a place where we're hearing those, those motifs passed around. Can we do the celli and bass uh, continuous section again, the pick up to measure 34 to the middle of measure 35? <laughs> So now they get the main motif that the violins started with. And then while they play that motif, the violins are playing the viola trumpet-like motif from the beginning. Um, this is pick up measure 34. Measure three. So we've traded, and then uh, let us hear the violas play middle of measure 33 to middle of measure 35. Sorry, whatever it was. <laughs> Great. And so let's put that all together now, two team, middle of measure 31 to middle of measure 37. interlocking different parts. There's a, there's a fancy musical word for that. It's called counterpoint. Let's all say counterpoint. Counterpoint. So counterpoint is, you can think of it as what's going on in your head right now. Like, if I were an animal, I'd be a yellow-bellied marmot. Or I had oatmeal for breakfast. Or I'm really looking forward to that holiday party later. Oh, it's so great to be with my grandparents today. It's many things going on. And I love the music of Bach. It's many things, so they're all layered together, and that's what Bach does so well. So, at this point, I'm going to need a volunteer to come up on stage here. Would someone under the age of 15 like to come up? Yes? All right. Come on. So, there's a staircase right over here, and you're going to help us with a motif that gets passed around the orchestra, like a soccer ball, for those of you who were watching the World Cup recently, or basketball, or some sort of ball. Yeah, you can come right through here. Yeah, come right up. And tell us your name. Elodie. Elodie? Elodie. So nice. that sounds like melody to me, which is beautiful. Um, come on up here, right in the front. You're going to be right in the center of the group and where a conductor might be if there was a conductor. So, this is Stephen. Stephen plays the violin, Elodie, and Stephen, can you play that measure that we discussed? <laughs> Great, so you hear that da 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 Great, so that thing is going to get passed through the whole group, and you, your job is going to be to point to the person who's playing that. And it's going it, to go like that, da 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 and then someone else is going to do it. So you're going to help the audience locate 
where that musical ball is being passed, okay? And there, there are no wrong answers, so no worries. But we're gonna also play it slowly so you can really pick it up. So this is measure 108 to the downbeat of measure 119. We're gonna do this slowly. And Elodie, just point to the person who's doing what Stephen just did. And maybe we can make it quite obvious too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> slowly, slowly, so like, one, two, See that get passed around? So, the only thing is, there was one person here, actually there were two, who weren't doing that. Who wasn't playing that, that motif? Who didn't get a chance? Anyone have a guess? Harpsichord, yes, and? Bass, Deborah and David. You were left out, except I think you were doing sort of the most important thing. Um, you got stuck on one note at one point there, right? Um, and there's a, there's a word for that, it's called pedal point or drone. So I would like us to all help Deborah and David get stuck on that note and enjoy it. So we're gonna sing, let, let's hear that low D that you get. sing that note and help us really, Bach uses this to develop tension and it gets really exciting. So we're going to play uh, measures 115 to 119 with you singing along on that low note. So let's find that note again. Can we hear it? All right, let's hear this. Keep singing it, and we're gonna do a crescendo. We're gonna start soft, and we're gonna get bigger while we play this. This also a little bit slow. Measure 115 to 119. Okay. Where are we? Yes. Three, four. D becomes a G. It's like a note that has grown up and become an adult. So, I think we're ready to play a larger chunk now and listen for all those interlocking motifs, listen for the musical ball getting passed around, and listen for that moment of D that, uh, that Deborah and David have. And we're gonna go from measure 78 to the end of the movement.
solo parts along with the violin in this concerto grosso. Great. And then let's hear, uh, just like the last piece, Bach puts the motif in different voices. Let's hear measure 23 to measure 35 in the flutes, solo violin, and violin. started with um, in another key, which you can think of as journeying to a, far, a, a land far away. And during that, that section, Bach puts a crazy windstorm in the violin part. This is measure 185 to the downbeat of 20, 221. Do you like to play fast sometimes? Yeah? It's pretty fun. 
Um, okay, so now I think we're ready to play a larger section of this piece. We're gonna, we're gonna pretend that that windstorm came in, but then um, the sun came out, and we're gonna play from measure 345 to the end of the movement. for many can charity, which is the violas get their day in the sun. Um, and we're gonna talk to the violas in just a moment. Um, but, uh, so yeah, this, this piece, it has a, something called a round or a cannon in it. Um, who here knows the song, Row, Row Your Boat? Most of us do, right? And that's, that has one of my favorite lyrics in it, life is but a dream, which is kind of why music is beautiful, because we just played that piece and it's already gone. And uh, so row, row your boat, you know, one, one group starts and then the next one enters. So, yes, and you know what? We're gonna have time for questions at the end. So all of, all of our young friends, please be thinking of questions you wanna ask for the end of the show about our instruments, the music, or anything, or it's just something you wanna say. Um, so, let's sing row, row your boat together. Uh, row, row, let's start on that note. Row. Row, three, four. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Great, and let's do the cannon. So Jesse, can you lead this side, and we will start on this side. Ready. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Beautiful, give yourselves a hand. Okay, so this piece by Bach is a fancy version of Row, Row Your Boat. And so and the word for that is canon, something in canon. Let me move my music out of the way so you have room here. And Jesse and I have concocted some lyrics. This is all instrumental music, um, but we, uh, we thought we'd, we'd make it very clear this canon for you, and how it's like, row, row your boat, if I can find my music. Bear with me. Okay, there we go. So, we're gonna do this together once, and, and you know, um, we all like fruit, right? I, I feel like fruit is one of uh, the favorite lyrics that we use when we, when we instrumentalists make up lyrics to music. So, this is about fruit. Um, okay. We've never done this before. Are we doing the... We'll do your, your part first, okay. just together. Okay. Uh, okay, three, four. I would like some apples, I would like some apples, I would like, would like, 
would like, would like, would like some apples and some berries and some yummy, 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 yummy cherries, yummy, yummy kiwis, yummy, yummy kiwis, yummy, yummy, yummy mangoes. All right. All right. Dare we try the cannon now? Let's do it. Okay. So I'm going to do part one. And Jesse's going to do part two. And these are separated just by a very short amount of time. Okay, so three, four. I would like some apples. I would like some apples. I would like, would like, would like, would like, would like, would like, would like some apples and some berries and some yummy, 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 cherry, yummy, 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 mangoes. All right. Whose favorite fruit is mangoes? Maybe. I never had mangoes as a kid. They're so good. Okay, so now we get to hear the violas, and, and we have two violas here. And what's your name? I'm Laura. And what's your name? I'm Laura. Okay. And what is one of your favorite hobbies? I like making things. Like, I saw you doing something yesterday. I like knitting. And Laura, what about you? I like knitting. <laughs> okay, so do all people who play viola have the name Laura and like knitting? Not necessarily, okay. Um, all right, so let's hear um, this opening now with the music that Bach wrote. And let me get out of your way. section uh, from measure 88 till the end of the movement and listen for all of that. It's like they're chasing each other, like a game of tag. 86. Sorry. 86. 86.
Stanford, the Lauras. That's their, their new band name. <laughs> Laura Squared, okay, yeah. Um, great, so we have just one more piece on this program, and um, for this one, David is moving from the harpsichord. He's, he's a, a double, probably triple or more threat. Um, but people who play harp, uh, play keyboard, like Bach himself, well, first of all, Bach played viola. He loved the viola, and many composers love playing the viola because you're kind of in the middle of the sandwich, the musical sandwich, and you get to hear from your point of view the high voices and the low. Uh, but Bach was known as a great keyboard player um, of the harpsichord, but really the organ was his main instrument. And with the organ, you can play really the whole range of the orchestral instruments. Um, so I'm gonna go over here to David, who you may have a little bit of trouble seeing behind this monstrous console. David, hello. So, tell us a little bit about the organ. Okay, so the organ is sometimes known as the king of instruments. Uh, it is primarily a wind instrument that's connected to a keyboard. The sound is made by, these days, an electric blower that creates the wind pressure so that when a key is depressed, not sad, right? Then the wind can come through the pipe and make the sound. Back in box day, however, they didn't have electricity. And so they used to have someone who would pump the organ with bellows. Uh, hopefully they got paid for that, but sometimes I think they didn't. They just pump all day long so that he could practice. Uh, That's like Arnold Schwarzenegger, I'm gonna pump you up. Maybe they were very in shape from that work. It was like a free workout. They were very in shape from that, yeah. This instrument is what's known as an electro-pneumatic instrument, which means that the console here sends an electrical charge through a cable to send a signal, sort of like in a computer, to open the valves of the pipes so that they will play. Not all organs are like that. In box day, they were known as tracker instruments, which if it were a tracker instrument, the keyboard would have to be directly connected to the pipes, which were in that big cabinet or piece of furniture against the wall over here. Yeah, you can kind of see, for those on this side, just the top pipes there, but that, that whole big area has pipes hidden behind uh, that beautiful wood. So let's hear just sort of some of the things you can do with the organ, just a couple. Of so, so the organ, it's called the king of instruments because it's divided into divisions where you might think of them as choirs or groups. So we have the sound of uh, flutes. Microsoft people who calls the organ really the first computer, one of the first computers in the world. Um, okay, so in this piece, David gets to be the soloist. He's featured. Um, this is his keyboard concerto, organ concerto, and uh, let's let's hear a little bit of it. I think we're going to start off with the opening, which is always a good place to start. And um, in this opening, we all play the main idea of the piece together with the organ, but then almost immediately you'll hear 
us breaking apart and accompanying uh, David's fancy magic over there. So measure, uh, we're doing measure, beginning till measure 13. that long D that Deborah was playing in the bass. Now, the reason, I'm gonna go back to David. Why is it called a pedal point when you get that long note? Uh, because you can hold that note and on the organ often with my foot, which is what I'm doing right now. You can't see this, but there are actually four keyboards here, three of which are played with my hands and one with my feet. So the pedal point allows something to be sustained and all kinds of things can be played on top of it or against it, creating interesting uh, tensions. Exactly. So we're going to, in this piece, Bach makes good use of those pedal points. So we're going to try out one of them, which is uh, measure 148. And we're going to go until measure 162. Thanks for bearing with all these measures. That's how we keep track of where we are in the music. Stay tuned for what happens next week. All right, uh, so you heard that. That was the same D, actually, that you all sang with us, and, and against it, all that other action was happening. So let's hear one other pedal point in this piece, which is measure 70 to the downbeat of measure 93. And the viola and the organ, listen for the violas here. They're the ones who get in charge of this pedal point. music can do. Okay, so we're going to play from letter E, measure 113, to the end of this movement for you. And, uh, list, uh, and please, uh, after this, we're going to have time for some questions, comments. So be thinking of what you want to ask, either the Wizard of Oz over there, or any of us. 
um, about music, about Bach, about anything you've heard today or you're curious about. Okay, here's the last section of the D minor concerto. Thank you.